All right, so now moving on to the next part of the added material that you guys needed to learn in order to be more successful next year in high school. And that's going to be factoring trinomials. And you're seeing, you're going to see that this is actually undoing uh, what we just did in the last video, which is multiplying binomials. This is going to bring us back to that. And you'll find out what I mean by that in a second. But what you'll have to know how to do by the end of this video uh, and by the end of this practicing us doing this is know how to factor trinomials. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can learn how to factor trinomials. Um, and I teach one specific method. Uh, but when you guys learn in the future, or if you Google this, you'll see that there are a lot of different methods to, to how to factor. Um, once you find one that works best for you, I would just suggest sticking with it. Um, but I like to teach a very specific method. Um, and if you've learned another way of factoring already, by all means, use the method that you have already learned. All right, so in our last video, we learned how to multiply two binomials together. And I'm just going to show the table method again. So we have our x, we have our plus 2, we have our x, and we have our plus 3. So we can go ahead and use this table method to then multiply these two binomials together. And we get x squared, and we get a positive 2x, a positive 3x, and then we get a 6. And then we know that our diagonals we can add together, so it's going to be x squared plus 5x plus 6. So when we multiply those two binomials together, that is what we got. Now when we factor, we figure out what do we multiply, what binomials do we multiply to get this. So that's what I meant earlier when I said we undo what we were doing in the last video. So now we're going to start with our trinomial, and we're going to figure out, well, what two binomials do we multiply to get here? Right. And there are different methods that you can learn for this. And the way that I do it is I do what's called the X method. So I draw a big X when I go to factor. And then I put a little plus sign here and I put a little multiplication sign here. So it reminds me. All right. And then this number in front of our X squared here is understood to be a one. And I always multiply our number in front of the X squared and our constant. So we always multiply those two numbers together. And where we write our multiplication symbol, we write that answer there. So 1 times 6 gives me 6. The number here that's in our middle just drops where that plus sign is. right? So that will then be a 5 there. Let me just change its color so it stands out a little bit more. So there's our 5. So we multiply our, two, our number in front of our x squared and our constant. And just so you know, in your standard form, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to give you guys a little paper that you guys can have uh, as you're doing problems with this. And you'll see that we will say our a times our c gives us this 6, which is the number in front of our x squared and our constant. And our b just drops down to that middle. And now what we do is we ask ourselves, what are numbers that multiply to give me this 6 and that add to give me this 5? So that's why I put the multiplication there, not only to remind us that we're multiplying these two numbers together, but also we're looking to see what numbers multiply to 6. And then this plus sign here, it's reminding us numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So if you're unsure, you can go through all of your multiples of 6. Well, 6 has multiples of 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Well, which one of these add to 5 and 2 and 3 do? <clears throat> and when you're doing this, we're going to do some other problems later on. Sometimes they'll have to subtract and we'll identify when that happens. But this is a positive number and so is this one. So in order for two numbers to multiply to be positive, that means that they have to be the same. And then that also tells us that we're adding them together to get to this 5. So our two numbers then will be 2 and 3. All right, 2, and we always check our work. 2 times 3 gives me 6. 2 plus 3 gives me 5. So I know that it works for both of them. After we do that, we then divide both of these numbers by the number in front of our x squared or our a. So in this case, it's 1. Now, when it's 1... This is where like some people might think that this method is a little bit longer, takes you a little bit more time. But when that number is not one, uh, that's where this method, I think, is really helpful. Uh, so I just have my students use this method every time. So they're practicing it every time. And, it, and that way they're not trying to think about, oh, I use it now and I don't use it then. So I just have them use it at all times anyway. All right, and now after you then divide by that number in front of the x squared, which in this case, it's one. Then we're going to now create, we use these fractions to create our binomials and what we multiply together. Now, there was a Drake song a while ago that was, we started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here. So I use that when doing this. We start from the bottom, meaning that whatever number is in our denominator is the number that is written in front of our x. So in this case, it's 1, so it's 1x. Now, you don't have to write that 1. And we started from the bottom, now we're here. Now, the number in, in the numerator is what gets added or subtracted. So it's a positive 2, so it's x plus 2. And we started from the bottom, now the whole class here, so it's 1x plus 3. 
So you see it's exactly what we started with when we multiplied together, x plus 2 times x plus 3. So we're undoing the multiplication that we did. And this is sometimes really important when you guys are learning this in the future because we this is how we can solve uh, quadratic equations through this factor. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a few more examples of this. All right, so now our next question is to be factoring this trinomial. So once again, I draw my x, I write my multiplication sign and my plus sign. I multiply the number in front of my x squared, which in this case is 1, and my constant. So 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. And then that middle number will just drop. All right, so now <clears throat> I see that my number is multiplied to give me a negative number. So I'm looking to see what numbers multiply to negative 10 and they add or when we combine them, it gives me a negative 3. So if two numbers multiply to give me a negative 10, I know that one of these numbers has to be negative. It's impossible for us to multiply two numbers together and get a negative without one of them being negative. So that means I'm just going to write negative and positive. And it doesn't matter which way you put it, but I'm just letting myself know that one of them is negative and one of them is positive. Now the difference is when one of them is negative and one of them is positive, when we're doing our factors, we're no longer adding them together because they're not the same sign anymore. So now we're looking to see, well, which ones, when we subtract them, will have a difference of three. Well, the difference between one and 10 is nine, and the difference between two and five is three. So I know these are the numbers I'm using. Now I need to ask myself, well, which one will be positive and which one will be negative? Well, since the number I'm looking at is negative, that means my larger number must be negative and the smaller number must be positive. And I can check my work. Negative five times two, that does give me negative 10, check. And negative 5 plus 2 does give me negative 3. Check. So we can always check our work. And now we put it over top of the number in front of our x squared, or the a. And now we use that song. We started from the bottom. Now we're here. So it's 1x, or x. And then our number is minus 5. So it's x minus 5. And we started from the bottom. Now the whole class here. So it's x plus 2. And if we were to want to check our work, we can multiply these out and see that this does in fact equal x squared minus 3x minus 10. So we can always check to make sure that we are factoring it correctly by simply just multiplying them back out. All right, there's a few more that we're going to go through with it in this video, just so that way you can see a lot of the different examples. All right, so here we're going to factor x squared minus 9x plus 18. Same thing. I draw my x. I write my multiplication sign and my addition sign. I multiply the number in front of my x squared and my constant. So 1 times 18 gives me 18. And then that middle number drops. So if you notice here, when we multiply our numbers together, it gives me a positive 18. But when we add them, it gives me a negative, eight, a negative 9. So we know that if we multiply two positive numbers together, it will give me a positive number. But I also know that if I multiply two negative numbers together, it gives me a positive number as well. And if I'm looking to add these numbers together because they're going to be the same sign and it gives me a negative number, that means that both of my numbers had to be negative. So right away, I can write a negative and negative because it's impossible for me to multiply two positive numbers together, get positive as my multiplication. But then when I add them, I get negative. That's just not possible. So because they're multiplied to give me positive, that tells me that the signs are going to be the same. And then whatever sign that is in our middle is the sign that they're going to be. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at my factors of 18. So we have 1 and 18, we have 2 and 9, and we have 3 and 6. So now since they're the same sign, I know that they're going to add. Well, 1 plus 18 gives me 19, 2 plus 9 gives me 11, 3 plus 6 gives me 9. So I know that these are the numbers I'm using. And since they're both a negative sign, it doesn't matter which one I put where. And I can check my work. Negative 3 times negative 6 equals positive 18. Check. And negative 3 plus negative 6 gives me a negative 9. Check. Then I'm going to put both of them over top of that 1. And we started from the bottom. Now we're here. So it's going to give me x minus 3. And we started from the bottom. Now the whole team here, the whole class here, which is x minus 6. And that will be our factor form. All right. There is one more example I'm going to go through, which is when this number is not 1, which is why I, I prefer to use this method more than any other. The way that we're doing them now with all these x squared numbers being one. There are other methods that are a little bit faster and a little bit uh, more direct maybe, um, but you can't use, or those methods I think become a little bit harder as that number in front of the x squared is no longer one. So that's why I think um, this method that we're doing here is just a little bit better because even though it might take a little bit longer for these particular questions, you don't have to think about when and when I shouldn't use this. You just use it every time. And I think in the next question is where, you, where I think it's a little bit easier uh, than some of the other methods that are taught. 
All right, so now, once again, we're asked to factor this, and you see this number is no longer one, and that's where it gets a little bit harder. There's some methods that people teach where they're called guessing and checking, and you literally just guessing and then checking to see if it works, and you use logic along the way, so that way you're not like just guessing randomly, but I just don't like the idea of guessing. Um, yeah, you're always going to kind of be guessing in every method because you're trying to figure out what numbers multiply to something and add to something else, but this is a little bit more direct in my opinion. So we draw the X just like we do on every other question. We write the multiplication and we write the addition. And within our multiplication, we multiply our A and our C or the number in front of the X squared and our constant. And six times negative four is going to give me negative 24. So I will write negative 24 here. And that middle number just drops. So we have a positive five. So once again, if two numbers multiply to give me negative, I know one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. It's impossible for it to be otherwise. So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to give me negative 24, but add to give me a positive 5. So what that means then is I can write out the factors of 24. I have 1 and 24. I have 2 and 12. I have 3 and 8. And I have 4 and 6. So since they have different signs, I know that we're looking for the difference, not the addition, the difference of it. So 24 minus 1 is 23, 12 minus 2 is 10, 8 minus 3 is 5. So I know that's the one I'm going to use. Well, now I need to ask myself, well, which one's going to be the positive number and which one will be the negative? Well, since the 5 is positive, the larger number has to be positive. So I put 8 there and I put 3 here. All right, now this is where this whole fraction thing that we made before, this is where it now comes into play a little bit more. So now we need to divide each of those numbers by that A. And we need to, we always reduce our fractions. So we need to reduce our fractions. Well, 8 over 6 reduces to 4 over 3. They're both divisible by 2. And negative 3 over 6 reduces to negative 1 over 2. They're both divisible by 3. So now once we simplify, this gives me my factor form. We started from the bottom. Now we're here. So now instead of it being a 1 that we were used to, it's a 3. So it's 3x. So we started from the bottom. That's a number in front of our x. And now we're here. So it's a positive 4. So it's plus 4. We started from the bottom, not a whole class here, so it becomes 2x minus 1. And that is our final answer for that factored form. All right, that is it for this video.